while Qatar is being scrutinized for its stance on LGBTQ people, right? A white man, I want to make this clear, was a white man in the USA has gunned down five people and injured 18 in a gay club. Last week, sorry, last month, Idaho and Texas pastors said gay, lesbian and transgender people should be executed by the government. And this is, this source, I've got this from is CNBC. I want to talk about the human rights of factory workers, low pay workers in Bangladesh that are being paid 21p an hour. That is apparently a good wage, yeah? 21p an hour. 21p an hour to make the England football kits that the English FA is selling for £160. That sounds like an amazing profit there for the English FA. Really good profit like, margin, like, isn't it? Like excellent profit including margin. Including cost of materials, <clears throat> including cost of shipping. Yeah? It's still a fantastic profit margin. Oh, they are creaming but, it. But nobody I, cares, actually, But nobody, really. wanna, nobody wants to talk about the people of Bangladesh that are being forced to work for so little. Yeah, but why do the factory owners get paid enough? Why do the ship, people who ship it get paid enough? Why do Sports Direct and all the other companies get That's paid right. enough that sell them? Why does the FA make enough profit on them, but the Bangladeshi workers make not even 21p, you said 21p an hour? An hour. And how that, long does it take for the, how many kits did they make in an hour? I bet they make a lot. I bet Bro. they're forced to work very quickly. Bro. It's not going to be them working at a slow pace, you know, every single shirt. It's not going to be stitched with love, care and attention. It's going to be... It's going to be pre a pressured factory. I can just imagine that they are going to be... And if they make a mistake... There's going to be people gonna cracking happen. the whip. So if they mess up, there's going to be punishment. Maybe they lose half a day's wage. All right, that's five that's hours. Tough. That's a pound. For us, it's a pound. But for them, it could be the food for the week. You don't know. Let's, let's just clarify now, yeah, that we... By the way, the, the workers who have been injured or have been treated unfairly in Qatar or in any country... We relate with them also. No, what I'm we saying, care about their the, re the reason rights. why I wanted but, to speak about but, the rights of the Bangladeshi people is because workers don't deserve rights just in one country when the Western media sees fit for them, for them to decide themselves and have a general consensus saying, actually, you know what? You know what? Let's just talk about the let's rights of the workers in this country. Yeah. Let's, no, let's pick on one person, actually, because there's a person that I think we both respect. We both see him as one of the most amazing presenters that we've ever seen. Made so many people fall in love with football. Gary Lineker, yeah? Look up to Gary Lineker. But for the fact that he led a team of pundits and... And you know he was involved in the decision-making process there. 100%. Because he is very um, crucial very, to BBC yeah, yeah. football, yeah? And he has been there for many, many years. The fact that they refused to show the opening ceremony and spent 40 minutes before the end with it, of the hour, before the opening game of the World Cup, talking about politics, which, in my humble opinion, including Gary Lineker, who does sometimes have good political stances in the UK, international politics, he has zero knowledge of. The thing is, normally, previously, Gary Lineker has been supportive of the migrants trying to cross the channel. He even took in four Syrian refugees, right? So we, like, so he, we he, so really do respect, traditionally, we Gary, respect Lineker Gary Lineker so is, much. Is, and from a non-biased point of view, he's like, he always holds... A, how can I put it? He makes an educated assessment of situations and However, then speaks. But on this occasion, I feel as though he has been led more than him taking the lead on what has been. I think he's either been led or, or he's spoken without having full context or he's spoken emotionally. Because he is clearly, obviously, um, you know, impacted and very engulfed in supporting people of... LGBTQ plus uh, and their rights in supporting women in football in supporting migrant workers he loves that but his emotions I think in this occasion have got the better of him because unfortunately he remains to be English he remains to be part of the English media he remains to have that colonial mentality and uses that selective bias to say do you know what when it's Qatar when it's an Arab country and a Muslim country we will impose our views on them. But let me tell everybody watching this. I guarantee you as a... I'm not British by nationality, yeah. but by upbringing, I spent 20 years yeah. growing up in, um, in Britain, right? My family are British now by nationality. And the amount of years it took them to become British and the amount of money and the amount of heartache that caused us, I'll speak about that later in this video. But me being British, I've seen the migration problems. I've seen... How migrants are treated here. 
I've been treated a type of way in this country. And I guarantee you, people of LGBTQ plus community, people who are women in football or whatever, will be treated in this World Cup and even when they go on Can holiday. Can I just say, you know, this even... World Cup will be the first World Cup that will have female referees. So, so, so I'm going to say it again. The people from that community, those communities who Gary Lineker and the rest of the British media and the Western media are standing up for right now, will be treated better than migrants are treated in the UK, in the Western countries. Right? This is the point. Why are we not beating that same stick that we're beating Qatar with? And you know what? I'm not against it. Yeah? Okay. You want people to be inclusive. 100% I'm behind that. But why are we not disallowing countries like France, who've got the Calais refugee camp, where the police and the, the, whoever the, the forces are, maybe military, beat and abuse and leave refugees to live in inhumane, inhumane, uh, you know, conditions. Day in, day out, week in, week out, yeah? This happens, and I've got friends that have been who are, you know, charity workers or who have just volunteered, that put, put together some clothes and went to help in the, the Calais refugee camps. Why are we not banning France from the World Cup? Come on, this World Cup's going on. Why? If the Italians were in this, I'd have so much to say. If the Italians were in this, yeah. I would have so much to say because the Italians pay off, I'm from Libya, so I know about this. They pay off Libyan, the Libyan military and the, the uh, Navy to bring back boats of refugees to make sure, even if they're in Italian water, you come into our water and take them back because we don't want those refugees. If the Italians were in this World Cup and had they been qualified, no one would have said anything. But we're not using the same, you know, set. It's a very good point you make there. We're not having, we're not holding every every country or every because because they've said they said Iran shouldn't be playing because of what's going on in Iran. Russia no, no, uh, they should said, be disqualified. No, no, they, initially they said Iran shouldn't be playing because of their connections with Russia and what Russia's doing in Ukraine. Iran shouldn't be in the World Cup and that World Cup play should go to the Ukraine. That hasn't happened. Iran are playing tomorrow, but now Iran are persecuting their own people and they're saying Iran, again, shouldn't be in the World Cup. But I've, I've got a point to make, right? We're talking about the rights of the <laughs> LGBTQ community, right? And the next World Cup is going to be in the USA. Just this week, yeah? While Qatar is being scrutinised for its stance on LGBTQ people, right? A white man, I want to make this clear, was a white man in the USA has gunned down five people and injured 18 in a gay club. Last week, sorry, last month, Idaho and Texas pastors said gay, lesbian and transgender people Man. should be executed by Man. the government. And this is, this source, I've got this from, is CNBC. But no one, and I mean no one, is boycotting USA having the World no. Cup next. No. Or let's not even forget to mention the fact that if somebody, if a woman is raped or if a young girl is molested and she becomes pregnant and she wants to have an abortion because of the abuse that she has endured, she has no right to have an abortion. She will be arrested for committing murder. This is the USA. The people that think they can deliver human rights all over the world and de deliver the rights of the migrant workers all over the world. Yet, these, you know what? This is the thing. There's so many hypocrisies in There's this. So, there are so many we're, 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 points we're we can is, make. What we're saying is you need to be everyone be fair. with the same state. Be fair. And these countries, like the USA, like France, like Italy, would have been playing without an issue, are in the World Cup, which is why Infantini, is that what it's called? Yeah. The now president of FIFA, who has actually been un unopposed in the last election, has come out and said, let's forget about the football. I'm European. Yeah. We Europeans shouldn't be telling the rest of the world how, how, how to be humane, good. how to be good. Because we've had 3,000 years of not being good. Yeah. And that I agree with him with holistically, wholly. And you know what? Me and Faz, by the way, we're not pro Qatar in it. We're not pro Qataris. I've got Qatari friends, I love them because I'll say one thing about the Qataris, everyone who goes to the World Cup, LGBTQ plus or not, whether you're a player, whether you're a fan, whether you are black, whether you are white, whether you're African, whether you're South American, whether you're from Asia, whoever you are, when you've come back from Qatar, everyone will say this, this has been one of the best experiences I've ever had. Everyone was so respectful because I know the Qatari people from my They're experience. Very accommodating. Very accommodating, very accommodating and accommodating. really, really, really hospitable people. But there are reasons why Qatar shouldn't have hosted the World Cup. There are. The, and number, not... the number one reason was the, the footballing reasons. The footballing reason. reasons. <laughs> because they weren't, previous to that, they weren't a strong footballing nation. And since then, they've been trying to improve their league, etc. But as someone who knows about 
a little bit, not entirely, about football and politics in the Middle East. Let's let's talk about the things at Qatar that, that if I was a sports journalist like Gary Lineker, I'd be talking about. Why do Qatar give nationality to people who are so good at sport that they represent Qatar? But then when you're working as an engineer or when you're working as a lawyer or when you're working as whatever and you have children in Qatar, they don't get the nationality. Why, did it, why did it, is there a preference to the sports people, but not to the rest of those people? This is a really good political point because I know people who work in Qatar and they struggle with this. I know people who've had children in Qatar and their children are Qatari, but they don't have the nationality. Because Qatar actually is entirely, or not entirely, 90% non-Qataris, but only 10% have the nationality. Why is there a preference to these sports people? That's a good point. But if Gary Lineker, again, love Gary Lineker, clearly doesn't have the... the the breadth of knowledge to actually deal with this topic. If you actually brought that point up, I'd be like, yo, do you know what? Yeah, you know, you're educated on Not this. Not only that, the level in which they were playing today, right, just goes to show but, how far behind no, they are. But no, 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 but, but you're, you're dissing them based on today. But let's be real, they've just won the Asian Cup. So they definitely deserve to be here. But what I would say, when they won it, they were non-existent, bro. When they won the bid for this World Cup, yeah, yeah, they, they, they were non-existent. Were so based on that, yes. And then the other reason is, and but this is again goes back to beating everyone with the same stick. As someone who is from the Middle East or North Africa, which is, you know, the Arab countries are considered the Middle East uh, as well, they get involved in the conflict and they use their money to back different governments, which leads to conflict in, in, in the area like I'm from Libya again. And I know about this because they picked one side alongside the French, alongside the Turkish, uh, alongside the rest of the Western world. But then the Saudis and the Russians and the Egyptians and the Emiratis, they back the other side and that's causing a proxy war within Libya, right? Now, this is something I would use against the Qatari government. I would say, no, that is incorrect. And that is a reason why I wouldn't want them to host the World Cup. But if we use that reason again, who are the best at doing this? The US of A. Well, the US are, are doing the this best right now in Ukraine. Doing this. And they do it in Ukraine. No, never mind Ukraine. Syria. Syria, the UK and USA single-handedly and the funded French. all and the, the groups that ended up becoming ISIS, bro. The groups ended up becoming ISIS. They backed the rebels. That's right. And then they became ISIS. They did it with the Taliban. They're the ones that formed the Taliban because they backed the Taliban. And then they rid themselves of it and we're going to go to war against the Taliban. The USA, the English, man, you cannot talk about. You cannot talk Moral, about human moral rights, rights, morals, yeah. anything like that. Because 100%. if we look at your... What you're doing, and the reason is, look, Gary Nika, still, you should be, you should be saying, yeah, the Qataris should be better at this, yeah? You should be doing that. But all we're saying is, use the same stick to beat everybody with. And the last thing is, rather than having the negative rhetoric and not showing what the Qatari people are doing, I would say, if you're someone who's pro-LGBTQ+, yeah? And for the World Cup to be firstly in an Arab and a Muslim country, if... It's supposed to be, it is supposed to be illegal to be homosexual in Qatar. But actually, there are many homosexuals who live every day and live their lives in Qatar and they don't get beaten, they don't get arrested, they live their lives and that's it, right? But the second thing is, now publicly, the Qatari government has actually made a step in the right direction with LGBTQ plus rights. They've said, come to Qatar, we welcome you and we won't treat you indifferently, all we want is everybody to be respectful to our modest the key, laws. The key statement that they make is whether you are from the LGBTQ background or if you are straight, heterosexual, whatever, whatever you identify yourself as, do not have any public displays of affection. Be modest. Just be modest. A modest society states whatever you want to do in terms of love, affection, touching, hugging, kissing, you do behind closed doors. Outside, you do nothing. There's no need because that what you do in private is between you and the person you're, you're doing it with. What you do outside for everyone to see, that's what they want to regulate. And it's as simple as that. If you're not going to follow that rule that what you do outside, that we will then deal with you accordingly, depending on what you are doing in the public domain. If you don't want to be punished, don't do it out in the, on a main street or in a tourist area. Do it in your hotel room or wherever it is you're staying. But, you could do what you want. But again, the message is... That's the same message to everyone who's, if you're whether you're uh, whether homosexual, you're straight, homosexual or whether you're heterosexual, doesn't matter. It's a, that is the type of respect that's expected in a Muslim and a conservative Muslim country. Because you could go to certain countries, which are Muslim countries that are not so conservative, that yeah, you can do whatever you want in the streets. But this is just 
What the Qataris in want. In this particular nation, which is a conservative nation, public displays of affection are frowned upon. And, and, you know and what they it, can be punished. You know what it is? We say conservative, but again, I've got a lot of friends from Qatar. Not all of them are overly religious, but the tradition, the culture itself, the is conservative. That's right. The culture of the people is conservative. So we've got to respect that. This is, we're talking about migrants. You know what Hugo Lloris said go on. was perfect. He said, when, people, when foreigners come to France, we expect them to follow a certain level of principles and behave in a certain manner. When I go to Qatar, I will be behaving and adhering to their rules and their local norms because we expect the same when they yeah, come to France. And it. it's as simple as that. Show a bit of respect, man. That's it, that's all it is. And, and the, the truth is, it's 28 days. You cannot expect a country to change their laws their beliefs, their regulations for 28 days. Well, and this is the privilege that is coming from Western countries, the white privilege that is coming. Well, and they're coming yeah. with that energy that like, change everything no, for us. No, that we said it, this is still, people are still in that colonial mentality where we're going to go over and you're going to do what we want. Yeah. This is a country that 50 years ago was a colony of the UK. And when you're saying these things, you have to know, you actually understand that you're still... Having that colonial mentality where we're going to come to your country, but you're going to do what we want. That's wrong. You can't do that. And again, for me, like uh, this is what is glaringly being misreported in the UK. The Qataris are taking a step towards better LGBTQ plus rights, better migrant rights, because they're actually bringing a focus, a microscope onto their country. And they're actually saying it's illegal to be homosexual in this country, but actually the rules are being bent. For anybody who's coming. And I think, and, and, and let's be real, and many people who, uh, or the people, my friends from Qatar, uh, who are new at university, I don't, I don't really speak to them that much now, still obviously, you know, got, got a lot of love for them. What they told me is, when you come to Qatar, there are rules for the Qataris, and there are rules for, the and there are rules for everyone else. Yeah. Everyone else, when you're in the hotels, when you're in your own home, yeah. when you're in, obviously there's certain bars and whatever, most of them are in hotels or in like complexes that are designed for tourists. Do whatever you want. That's right. But if you're Qatari, this is what it is. If you're Qatari, when you go into the hotel, you have to sign in. And then there's our eyes on you. So basically what they're saying is, we've set these rules for ourselves. Our citizens, which is only 250,000 by the way, right. they have to follow these very strict rules. Whereas if you are non-Qatari, do whatever you want. Right. And look at Qatar now. This is one of the most modern cities, Doha, so in I, the world. Can I just say, I've been there several times, right? And people forget this as well. People in the West seem to forget this. The infrastructure in the UK, right? In London, primarily. You have to say that the Qatari royal family is central keeping the London. lights on in central London right now. Wow. You know, they own so many, so many amazing properties and buildings in the city of London. Wow. They, they invest so much into this country. Right. So before we begin to start questioning their human rights, there are many other countries we can question their human rights as well. In the same with France now, as you mentioned earlier, you said that the the, the bid for the yeah the bid for the so I'll, I'll explain this. So many people are talking about bribery for the votes. Yeah. This has never been proven, by the way. But in the case of Qatar, it's uh, guilty yeah. before before proven bribe. guilty yeah. and actually never proven guilty. But with the bribes, right? Some. Countries were supposedly bribed, right? By all the officials who make the votes for those countries were supposedly bribed, which was never proven. But FIFA was obviously very corrupt in the set platter. So everybody knows that. So that may have happened. I'm not saying it hasn't. But with France, France are too big to be bribed. Yeah. yeah? Uh, Michel Platini, who it was, who was going to make the vote on behalf of France, he's too big to be bribed. You know what I mean? Uh, the, he was in charge the, of for, UEFA at the time. Yes. So, so you can't just buy his vote. That, can't, that yeah. guy decided. They were the ones. I mean, UEFA and Infantino, is it? Infantino, uh, yeah. Infantino. They were the ones who were actually anti Plata yeah. and they were, they were backing bids against yeah. Plata. They were against the corruption in FIFA, right? And this is very well documented. There's the Netflix documentary about it. It was really good. Uh, very clear about this. But so the Qatari uh, foreign minister went to France and. This is as this was happening and spoke to the president because the Qataris have been trying to raise their status in the world. And this is, again, something you may be critical and of. And also, them. they were looking to change opinions of Middle Eastern Middle East countries, and, the Muslims, and Arab, the and Arabs, Muslims. what they are about, you know, the, the love for their own people, the love for other countries around the world. Because there has been a rhetoric that says people that speak Arabic are crazy, holding AK-47s, wearing suicide bomber vests, Shouting, yeah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, ready to kill. That is not the case. 
And that's, the Emiratis, the Saudis are changing that, and the Qataris are looking to change that on a massive level. So, Hence the reason why there's so many massive events, sports events taking place in, in these Qatar countries and the, now. Yeah, and, the, and UAE. And Saudi as well. And Saudi as well. So, so, this is, so when the foreign minister went to the, the French president, he told him about his plans to invest in France. PSG. Very happy. PSG very happy. is owned was, by the Qatari yeah, country. They were very happy with it. The, pre- the president of France at the time was so happy with it, he invited Michel Platini to meet the Qatari foreign, uh, foreign minister, minister and they spoke about it. And Michel Platini is actually in the, in the documentary, he's interviewed saying, nobody ever told me to vote for Qatar, but the president was hinting, vote for Qatar. But no money was exchanged, nothing like that. The president was very behind what Qatar wanted to do in France. That's not called bribery. That's, that's called business. Di- that's called diplomacy. That's business. That's diplomacy. Look, we're coming to invest in this country, yeah? Whether you, whether you vote for us or not, there was no mention of the vote between the foreign minister to the president. The president just thought, let's sweeten this deal up. And you know what? I don't think Platini voted for Qatar anyway. That's what it's because Platini lives in France and he knows I can do whatever I want. I, I'm, I'm the decisive vote on this. And I don't think he voted for Qatar anyway. Uh, somebody can correct me, obviously, in the comments. But that's the point. This is what the Qataris did, which pissed the world off to get the bid. But really, truly, all of what we're seeing right now is sourness from England and jealousy and the Americans jealousy. because they thought they were going to take 2018 for England, 2022 for Qatar. It didn't happen. And now Sepp Blatter, who was the corrupt FIFA president, is hailed by Alan Shearer, quoted by every single uh, media outlet. Sepp Blatter said the, there was bribery involved in this and this and this and this uh, for the Qatar bid. Do you know why? He never spoke about bribery in FIFA before. <laughs> That's right. Because it went against him, because that vote went against him and he didn't want Qatar to have it. He wanted the states to have it. And for once, yeah, Sepp Plata didn't get what he wants and now he's sour about that. And now the person who was in charge of FIFA when it was very, very, very corrupt is being hailed as a hero. And Infantini, who was the person who was involved in removing Plata, yeah. who was involved in he's actually clean. calling he's out, actually clean calling FIFA. out this, this, the, the bribery and all of the bad practices... He's the one who's now the, the villain. And it, just, it doesn't make sense to me, if I'm honest. To be honest, a lot of it won't make sense to you and me. Yeah, it's... Because we, think, we don't think the way they think. This is the thing. And w- what we're saying here, if you look from a neutral, just look from a neutral eye. Don't look already making a judgment before even looking at all of the facts, all of the information, all of the details. And like I said, like I explained earlier, with regards to the shooting in a gay club in America, how religious leaders in America are encouraging the government to execute people from the LGBTQ community because they are identifying as being homosexual or lesbian or gay, whatever it may be, the, the religious Christian leaders are saying the government should execute them. Like this, yeah, man. this alongside with the, the a lack of anti- rights for women in the US. And very, very, very anti-Islamic rhetoric. Very, very bad history with the black community. Very bad history with the Hispanic community. Oh. America's going to get the t- 2026 World Cup and I guarantee the English media, well, obviously we're talking about the English media because we live here and that's what we see portrayed. The English media will not do what they did today. Oh, they they will air. They will every, air the opening ceremony. Second. They will celebrate the Americans yeah. because... Well, you make that decision. <laughs> you make that decision because for yourself. the way it looks is, if it's not right, it's not right. <laughs> Yo, straight That's up, the man. Way it looks. Unfortunately, it's unfortunate. I'm very disappointed with the BBC. I would have rather had hype and uh, excitement for. Well, I can, no, can for, I just say I never, English. I never saw the, uh, the the thing on BBC you watch, you because watch. I, I watched it on the uh, Qatari Sports Channel. Being sports, it's actually French. But is it French? No, no. It's, I thought, it's, it's, I thought it's, no. Being was French, but it's owned by Qatar. It's owned it's by Qatar. A, yeah, it's still a French company technically, I think. Well, being is a French name, but it's yeah. The head office is in Qatar now. It's in Doha now. No, but that's what it is. I think I think the one reason why I'd say the Qataris do deserve it is the fact that being sports and what they've been doing, Al Jazeera Sports previously it was called, they have been covering football, bro. Every game you've got the subscription, every bit of football, every no, game, just, and they've aired it to the world. No, 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 they've no. brought it to the world, man. Every game from every league in Europe. The top leagues, and then, over, and then and also then the other leagues that Asian aren't leagues the Asian leagues, all of them leagues that I don't, I don't seen. watch them. 
Right, I don't watch them once. I I tried, but I'm like, no, actually, I can't watch this. But the <laughs> French games, the Spanish, the heart German, heart. I, I am British. The no, Premier League is the, the best. Premier League is the only one for it's me. The only one for me. <laughs> no, but I, I watched the gym. I can't watch American football either. That's dead as well. I've tried. I've tried. I've tried. American but, football. You mean the no, no, the soccer, bro. Oh. Soccer, bro. Do you know? Do you know the one I don't? The one I really don't like watching. The way they the deliver. Australian, the Australian league. Oh, I can't watch that. Oh, no, it's me. I can't watch that. I'm sorry if and you're the Australian. Commentators as well. I'm sorry. No, it's not the commentators. The football is just slow, man. But it's you know too what? slow. But you know what though, right? There's some superstars. The way though that Bean actually delivers the way they are broadcasting these sports and events. Got, what? Listen, uh, you can't knock them. And the, you know, the in-game, the in-game tech that they use, right? It's pure class. Like, and some of the pundits it's, it's, they've got on, man, is they've had the best of the best of the best. Like, some of the pundits are excellent. Arsene Wenger has been on there way more than he's been on the Western he doesn't come TV on, shows. He doesn't come on uh, English ones, but... Because he's a Mourinho. custom, minute. Yeah, and Jose Mourinho is the same. He's on there. Listen, these guys come on there and they're dropping pure... Gems. Gems, bro. Like, now the World Cup's on, right? They will have Arsene Wenger. They will have people like Clarence Seydorf. They will have people like... like I remember last time they had Rivaldo on at one point. I was thinking, wow. this is just... Roy, Roy, uh, Rude Hullet as well. <laughs> he, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's on there as well now, isn't he? But the, the, the thing is, I think it's, it's time now for the players... Some of them have already made a, a, a stance. Eric Dyer, from Eric Dyer came out and said, you know what, you don't need alcohol in a stadium to be able to enjoy football. And you really don't, to be fair. And, and, and even in the, in the British stadiums, you can't have but alcohol you know within, in view, within view of the, yeah, the yeah. pitch as well. You can't have it while you're watching the actual game, but you can have it in the stadium. But in 2016, I think it was in the Euros were in France. I think, did England play Russia in that tournament? I can't remember. I think it, I think England played Russia in that tournament, and the the French government banned the sale of alcohol in that stadium for that game because of the fear of violence between the two nations because they've got a history of hooliganism. Now, and to be honest, if you look at England's behaviour last English year, fans. English fans didn't paint themselves or portray themselves in the best possible light. So you, we can't claim to be oh look we want a bit of alcohol here, but well, but once we have a bit of alcohol, the English fans go absolutely crackers. It goes back, yeah, it goes back to calling out injustice and uh, racial discrimination and sexual discrimination, wherever you see it. The, the English fans, like you said, when Saka and Rashford and Sancho were missed abused. those penalties, we were abused. Fans, fans, never mind the abuse of the players online, fans, English fans, began attacking, began attacking other English fans because of their skin colour. <clears throat> like, come on, you know... The chi- when they say the chickens are coming home to roost, the chickens came home to roost that day, and the rest of the English media now. I've never heard should that. Saying, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, but it's okay. I'll go with it. You've got. <laughs> no, you, no, we no, should no. look at yourself and and the fact that so many people, especially English media, say no. What? Just because we do you bad things easier, doesn't mean don't throw stones if you live in a glass house. No, no, I know, but but what, what their reaction to that is? Oh, we shouldn't stop calling out injustice just because we do injustice. Actually, no, no. Set the example. If you're so on your high horse and you're perfect, set the right example and go there. If you went there with some manners about this, the BBC, let's, let's actually look at the reality of it. The BBC have gone with their full team. They've got a studio in the stadiums. Yeah. In every stadium. And they're doing a protest within that yeah. studio, within that stadium. You've gone to somebody else's house. You're sat in somebody's living room and you say... I hate the colour of that feature wall right there. You make me sick for using that wallpaper. Yeah, and 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 your host, the, I guarantee you, they will do nothing to them. The the, the Qataris, they're gonna still treat them with regardless of respect. This, regardless so of this who broadcast, really, they've still been cared for and treated yeah, as guests. Who really, who really is in the wrong here? B- the BBC and are shameless. And again, and I swear shameless. to God, I swear to God. Oh well, we're talking about protests. I remember protesting outside BBC Radio Leeds when the Palestine injustice was happening, when the Iraq war was happening. And we know what the stance the BBC used to take then. The BBC has no leg to stand on, man. And really and truly, if I was any of those pundits, I wouldn't take the money. And really, if you wanted to really protest, you know, stay at home. I guarantee, you want to protest, you know, you know, yeah? You know one thing I will say? Stay at home, man, and protest. You know one thing I will say is that, that the, the only, I would say, completely impartial media person from the UK has been Piers Morgan. He's, yeah, he's just, you can love no, him or hate him, innit? No, no, like, so you, you, there's many things that we may have, we will disagree I, with I, I, I mostly disagree but with him. I mostly the, disagree with yeah, him. Yeah, but on this, on this particular topic, everything he said, 
has been correct. It's to a T. I think I think he's had enough of uh, people telling him how to feel, and he's never been the person who actually can. Uh, you know, I think he's a person who listens to opinions and take whatever he actually feels yeah. inside, which I do respect about him. And in this occasion, where every time he's interviewed, he's he's and he's just correct. literally, he's been saying the yeah. he's been saying you're saying, we have glass houses. Yeah. Let's not throw stones. Yeah, you... let's use the same stick to batter everyone with, and. And that is exactly that. And again, for me, this, if I was part of the LGBTQ plus community, I would actually feel like this is a step in the right direction. We've gone to a Muslim country. We've gone to an Arab country. We've been allowed to be there. And the players have been, you know, whoever they are, whatever they are, yeah. there are gay players. Yeah. There are gay players who will be at that World Cup, whether they're in the closet or not. And they can still play. There are gay fans who've gone there and no one's going to bat an eye to, bat an eye to them. And what shows me that is how the presenters, whether they're from Sky Sports, whether they're from BBC Sports, they've been in front of everybody, in front of the world, showing their concern and their, you know, how against, uh, you know, Qatar they are, and they've been allowed to protest, and they've been allowed to say whatever they have. And if it was really a backwards country, if it was really a country where you weren't allowed to express yourself, they won't broadcast tomorrow. They, they won't broadcast the next game. But you, we know that's not going to happen. Yeah. So... Let's just enjoy the World Cup. Yep. Can it, I... started, it started well. Uh, well, on being sports, it started excellently well. It started well. excellently. I didn't see excellently that. I didn't see, well. Bro, I'm actually disappointed. I didn't see the right. ceremony. Listen, it was excellent. I'll send you the link to watch it. It was yeah. beautiful. Amazing. And you know what I like? Yo, Ecuador. Yo, they look but Can they I look just ready. say? They can, I, ready. can I just say? <laughs> they look ready, yeah. bro. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> My guy. He was at Everton. He was at West Ham. Oh, um, this guy, <laughs> where, where was this, this, this guy, where was this guy then? <laughs> what was his name again? Valencia? Yeah. Uh, is it Enes? Eno, Eno, Eno Valencia. Eno Valencia, yeah. Valencia. I wow. just want to know, I, I'm, I'm with the West Ham and Everton fans thinking, you absolute nah. bastard, where were you like this for us? Bro, he was something else. Yo, now, but you know what? Bro? His movement, no, but his link. He's been hit. He's, been, he's scored fifteen goals already for Besiktas. I know, but still this season. Yeah, but still he's a man in form. No, bro. but he's in form, bro. He's but where, in form. Like, where was this form, form before? I'm just like. No, but it's like it's like he's the leader of all these youngsters. He's like his country's hopes are on him, man. Really, and truly, sometimes, you should have had a hat trick. Sometimes that makes you play better. You him. know, there was a rumor before the start of the game that said, you know, the, the Qataris are paid uh, eleven million dollars. To the starting players of the Ecuadorian team <laughs> for Qatar to win, yeah. Do you know? Do you know? And then when they disallowed that goal in two minutes, they disallowed that goal, and I was like, "Wait a minute! <laughs> Wait a minute!" But, do you, know, but do, do you know what you're saying there, though? Like, really, I think this is part of the reason that I'm personally actually a little bit insulted. It's part of that feeds into the stereotype yeah. of they're Arabs with oil money yeah, yeah, yeah. who are bribing everyone and to they get bought, whatever they, they want. The World Cup. And they bought the World Cup. Yeah. They, they, can't, they can't buy the World Cup, number one. <laughs> I'm yeah? in a group chat, yeah? yeah? One, one of my mates, yeah? <laughs> when that goal was disallowed, <laughs> he, he commented straight away in the group chat, he went, this, this World Cup's got a new rule. Uh, goals against Qatar won't be counting. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad, though. That, that, was, that, that, that was a silly you know, decision. When, but, but it is about being behind the keeper, isn't it? That's why it was offside, because he was behind the keeper. So when they went up for the header... No, but his le it literally was his... It was just this. It was just literally this from here to his foot was past the keeper. So, no, it's not even past the keeper. It's... You can't be past the defender who is, like, the one who's after like, the... Like, on being... It's a mad... It's a mad being, They were saying, VAR, this and VAR... They this, were this in it. They were absolutely so this is a Qatari. So this is a Qatari yeah. channel, but they are against the decision to disallow a goal against Qatar. That's what we're saying here. But, and you know what, though? I, I, I do want to say this because I haven't said this yet. The reason I'm also annoyed and insulted is as an Arab and as a Muslim, we love, like, especially in Libya, North Africa, love we football. love football. Like, Egypt should have had a World Cup yep. already. Egypt is one of the, the, the most successful African countries to ever play the game in Africa, right? You know, so many big countries. Syria and Iraq have been hit by war now. Huge footballing country. Saudi Arabia, huge footballing country, right? Uh, Morocco, Algeria, yep. huge footballing countries. <laughs> Even Tunisia, small. Libya, small. But they've got a history within the African nations. And for us to actually get a World Cup, yeah? It, it won't happen. We're so, no, 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 but we're, I'm so happy that Qatar have it. Even though I actually disagree with some of the politics, like yeah. I've already said on this video. I'm so happy they've got it. And 
everybody, it seems, that I'm watching at least, is putting a dampener on yeah, it. Yeah. And it is very, t- I actually see it as purely as racist, Islamophobic, and colonialist mentality. And it's that's upsetting. Why, that's why I'm watching it on BN Sports. This is an advert for being sports, clearly. No, but the reason you want why to sponsor because, us? You want to sponsor no, us? Because, being? because I'm not I'm telling you the truth. Because I feel represented. That's that's what it is. Even though none of the pundits are but on the being sports English on being sports Max and everyone else, there will be some. Yeah, speaking Arabic, there will be obviously. Of course, they're going to be from Egypt. They they have that main guy there all the time. Abu Treka. Oh, the Abu Treka. Bro. They have him there all the time. You know, but the way they are broadcasting it is representing us. In the right way. Yeah, yeah. No, and, no, 100%. And, you know, the hospitality, the way they're showing the interviews with the fans. The fans look happy. They've got fans, Argentinian fans speaking Arabic. Mad. Like, they're not going to show that on the BBC. They're not going to show that on ITV. It's crazy, you know, like, Are you ev- mad? every single, every single World Cup, I've watched it on BBC and I've seen them not represent the culture. I knew, I knew. They've, no, but I've I seen knew. them the first yeah, time yeah. represent the culture. Oh, the people have been so nice to us. Oh, we were at this hotel. Oh, we ate this food. Yeah. Bro, what? What's going on, man? There's, some, there's something wrong here, man. Yeah. And it's got to stop. It's got to stop. And uh, I might have to get one of those uh, boxes uh, to watch uh, box, Bean Sports. I can sort it out for you anyway. I'll sort it out, yeah? yeah? If you want a box, you want, you watch Bean, to message watch us. The Arab uh, football, uh, leave a comment. The, no, there, will, there are English channels, by the way. There are English channels as well. <laughs> English three channels or four? From all over the Is world. There's four English channels. Oh, like Bean Sports has got Bean Sports. Sports English 1, 2 and 3. And then there's like 10 Arabic ones as well. But the 11 or 12 <laughs> Arabic ones. There's 15 sports channels. 15 sports channels in total. And you also get Sky Sports on there, BT Sport on, on, the, on the on that team. That, that, and you get all the sports channels from that team. America, on uh, Germany, in France. Uh, okay, and be, be, be in sports French. Be in Listen, sports they're going to call us. They're going to say we're promoting I these, am uh, be in. these illegal, I am be illegal in. sites. I brother. am be in the salesman for be in sports. <laughs> <laughs> like they're going to say the, the brown one. They, uh, him promoting. with the, the funny hair, him, him. We're never going to get Hire a job. Him. Hire him. We're <laughs> never going to get a job on Sky Sports now. <laughs>